Well, I'm very excited to be back uh, doing this sort of thing, talking to people, uh, going out touring, and going to start rehearsing next week. Certain things kind of click into place when you put out an album, you know. You tour and um, you do radio and you speak to journalists and you make artwork and make videos. And I kind of had forgotten how much I enjoy the job, you know. I enjoy all the job, not just the making of the music. So it's, it's been fun. I really appreciate it because it has been so long. So I've got a lot of appreciation for it. It's nice to be out in the world again, you know, it was a quite a small uh, bubble I was in for a long time with the family and, and whatnot, so it's nice to be out meeting people in the world again. I had two children mm -hmm. and lots of life happened in the eight years. Um, as far as music, I put out a few um, 12 inches here and there and collaborations with different people. Mm -hmm. Um, and last year I put out an EP all sung in Italian, it was called Miss Empty. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's basically it in a nutshell. I fell in love uh, with my new partner, who's the father mm -hmm. of my second child, um, who's Italian, so some traveling. The Italian project, I did it, I actually created it with my partner, mm -hmm. who's also a music uh, producer, and Eddie Stevens, the three of us who, Eddie is the one who was my musical director for many, many years, and he's, he's the producer on Hairless Toys, the album. I suppose eight years things happen and things change in, in eight years, no matter what you do, you know. So if I, I had children, I changed. If I didn't have children, I still would have changed, you know. So it's a long time, many years have passed So since I wrote an album. And, um, and the times are different now. Um, there have been many kind of dance pop moments between now and then and um, I didn't feel it was it was right for me to try to do that again. In a natural way I just made this record with Eddie, Eddie Stevens and it's the result of that experiment, it's the result of putting those two characters, those two people who have had a 20 year history together in music. It's what happens when you put us together in the studio to create an album. It's just what happens and it was not really too thought about and because we know each other so well we didn't really need to discuss it. We just got on with it and we trust each other and um, we didn't have so many references really for this record. It was more free and um, and it just turned out the way it turned out. Yeah, the industry is, is a very different uh, animal than it was, for sure. I enjoy it. I mean, I like it probably better than, than it was for me years ago, you know, because um, Maybe I'm a control freak, but I actually like the fact that I've been given more responsibility for my career, you know. I mean, it starts with the fact that the album, this album was made without a record label. So I made it, finished it, and then I licensed it, which is kind of a new thing that people do now, that they didn't do when I started in the business. You know, you always got a record deal and then kind of carried on and finished your record with the kind of talking all the time to the record label. So that way was a very free way of creating the record, you know, creatively free, you know, to do any kind of record I wanted to do. And I felt sure in today's landscape that there was a way to put it out, no matter what kind of record 
it was. And I also felt sure that there was a fan base for me because I can see it. I can see it on Facebook, I can see it in the social media and I can be in contact with it and so I'm kind of quite, it gives me a sense of security mm -hmm. to do whatever I want to do really and um, I, enjoy, I enjoy the industry as it is. I mean it's a bit more homework, it's like coming home from school <laughs> and you have to do your homework, you know, you have to do your Facebook and your Twitter and you know check your things and when I started we didn't even do emails now I have to do emails and things like that but I like that too because it means that I can keep abreast of really what's happening with with the record and if I want to say something that's very very important to me to the people who I'm working with if I say it in writing I know it's set there you know nobody can say I didn't say it you know so there's there's a lot of very pos good positives about the way things have changed. Especially for an artist like me, I don't know how it is to start now. It may be very difficult to start making music now and to become something now. But from a point of view of somebody who already has a fan base and is established and knows how to make records, generally speaking, um, from that point of view, it's a good place to be. For some time, r running up to the end of Maloko, mm -hmm. I was getting m more and more insecure about that ending, you know, and I was getting more like, what's going to happen when it ends? Because not only was it all I knew, it was, you know, the only job I'd ever had, and. I started when I was 19 with Mark and, and Loco and it was, it was the only purpose I'd, I'd ever had. But it was something that I did with my boyfriend in a very secure environment in Sheffield, away from the music industry, protected by my boyfriend who was much older than me and a very experienced producer and a musician. Um, and I was not sure, really, that I could do it myself in another way. So I definitely had some insecurities of the built up toward the end of Maloko. And Maloko did not end well, you know, we weren't in a good place with each other, myself and Mark, when, when it ended. So many things were going kind of <clears throat> against me feeling good about what it was I had chosen to do with my life <laughs> and I had only accidentally become a singer anyway so I always felt like I was just really lucky and um, and and I had thought when I was younger that I was going to be a visual artist and um, so in a way I'd always felt like it was a slight mistake that I was a mus musician you know and it was only really when I did the first solo record that I could finally say, oh, this is really what I'm meant to do and I can do it in, 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 in other circumstances. And, um, and it was a great thing. And uh, Matthew Herbert was the best person to do that with, actually, because he's a very paternal person. He has his methods that really help you work fast. Um, he's very um, focused and uh, disciplined, and um, and he taught me an awful lot. And, and it was it was really great that it was him. And he take, took care of me, and he loved my voice. You know, he loved the sounds that I made. He loved the sound of me walking on the floor, mm -hmm. you know, or closing a door, or singing, or whatever, you know. And he has these incredible ears. So he was it was really nice. Um, environment to, to go to in that situation and, and, and made a completely unique record and a record about that moment and um, a record that wasn't at all in competition with anything I'd done in Maloko, it was just a standalone thing and, and that was the perfect kind of record to make really in that moment for me to feel good about myself.
You know, I watched Paris is Burning last year, first time. I, I loved it, every single frame of it. I was like, I say it's like eating chocolate for me, you know, to watch it. It just is so brilliant and flamboyant and beautiful and um, life affirming. And yet it's so full of kind of darkness as well. It, it's just got all these elements that I like to have actually in my performance, you know. So I really related to it. But I wrote the song really almost like I was writing a song for a Broadway musical, a translation of, of the movie, you know, of the film. And um, that was like a little exercise in that. But there's a great relationship between, there's a sort of a blurred line, I should say, between whether it's about me or it's about that, you know, because there's connection. There's definitely a connection. Um, and that's one thing. I mean, the rest, of, the rest of the record is more personal in a sense and more, more honest, just very much uh, quite a poetic record for me. I think it's more poetry in the words than, than I've ever, ever done before. And that's probably because the music's very poetic and, it, and it's longer spaces and the landscape of the songs change more so you're not you're not saying sing it back bring it back sing it back bring it back or you know the same thing over and over again you're saying different things to go along with the different things that are happening in the music so on the page you can kind of quite it's quite so satisfying to read the, the lyrics just on a page you know mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm quite honest in, in the record, I think, about who I am and how I feel and things that have happened to me and there are things there, there's a bit of nostal nostalgia there about things that have happened to me very, very long time ago. Um, and it's a mature record. <laughs> um, emotionally. Well, we were writing a lot, you know, we were very prolific, uh, two songs a day, at least. Mm -hmm. So we wrote 35 songs in four or five weeks. And uh, it was great fun like that. It was quite quick and it was on the spot. Lots of free association and um, just just getting on with it. Lots, pretty sort of disciplined, just going in, same time every day, staring at a blank page for me um, until something came, making myself do it. And um, the same for him, you know, he's very kind of disciplined in that way too. And uh, uh, But lots of fun, because we know each other so well. We're like brother and sister. Mm -hmm. Lots of joke and lots of filth, dirty jokes <laughs> <laughs> to break the, the tension, you know. So, lovely, just very nice and very natural, very... There is only eight songs on, mm -hmm. on Hairless Toys. There did only, when I came to see, we did only finish 14 of the, of the 35. Mm -hmm. So there's more than half mm -hmm. still to look at, actually, um, and to consider finishing, because we, we want to make another album from this glut of songs. When, when it came to sequence the album, um, which is often a terrible headache, you know, and you put it off to the last, last, last minute because you know it's going to be difficult. And I did put it off to the last minute. And I was in Ireland at Christmas time on holiday. And I couldn't sleep one night and I got up fairly late when everybody else was in bed and uh, went and um, started to sequence it. And it fell together within an hour. It was very quick. And I made that decision that, you know, everybody expected, including me, expected I was gonna put at least 10 tracks on this album. But when I came to sequence it, it just didn't feel like it needed it. I mean, they are long songs and they're very, as I said, the, the, the lyrics are very changeable and there's an awful lot of me. You know, personally speaking, I couldn't listen to much more Roisin, you know. So um, 
I thought if I can't listen to much more Roisin, then surely nobody else can listen to much more Roisin. But for, you know, it really was the, the album of all the albums that I've done. It's the one that fell into place the quickest. But perhaps it is because you know I know that we can do another album, so I'm not having to think this song, you know, has to go on this record. If it doesn't feel right on the record, I could put it on the next one. Do you know what I mean? So that took a lot of pressure off the sequencing of it.